Hey family, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon to everybody. I hope that you are well. I hope that you are well in the Lord. I just want to, yeah, I just want to do that quickly. Okay, great. I hope that you are well. Um, yeah, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. We serve a God who is true and who was, who is and is to come. It's getting very cold on this side of planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, winter is, is, is pretty much here where I'm at. So I just take this, to take this opportunity to just welcome our brothers and sisters from across the globe, our um, family members who recently joined us via our YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram community. Welcome to God's Heart Mission. Um, really, we're just about preaching the gospel and uh, doing that which the God of glory entrusted us to do, which is to spread the word and make disciples of Christ and equip the saints and um, be about the business of the Father. That's all we do. So a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for being a part of the community. Um, thank you for helping us as well spread the word by literally just sharing our posts, tagging somebody, whatever they lose. Like we don't do this for money at all. We don't have a banking account. We don't have a cash app. We don't have None of those things, okay? Um, God is handling up in, on his bill. That's what he does. Yeah. I take God head on. Not head on. I take him for his word. When he says, go just as you are and preach the word. I'm going to go just as I am, Lord, and preach the word. And let me tell you, since the establishment of God's Hara Mission in 2019, God has been handling on his bill. He has been handling on his bill. We've never had financial issues of whatsoever nature in maintaining that which has asked us to do so thank you jesus for that it is his mission and he's running it and he's running it well in the way that we want so we just do what he says and we we be about the business so yeah that's it that, that's what we do so welcome everybody um as you know i i hop on as and when the spirit leads i never come on here unless i'm definitely sure that god wants to impart a word or two to his sons or and daughters um, because I report to the Lord and he has his own schedule and I just follow what he says. <laughs> Anyone who heard, he wants to do at any given time. So if you just tuned in, welcome to today's teaching. Um, the Holy Spirit and I figured it might not be that long. I don't know, Lord. I don't know. To God, long might be like, I don't know, five minutes or five hours. I don't know. I'll, I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to flow because trying to put a time frame on this, it, it, it never works. So anyway, enough about... Um, my little plans, let us just pray before I impart that which the God of glory has um, has landed in my spirit. So if you're on the other side of the screen, please feel free to join in. Um, even when you do come across this video at a later stage, when the Lord leads you to it, um, join in, just attach your faith to, to, to our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. This is the day you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to minister into our hearts, that you lead us in the way we should go. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can totally depend on you, for you are the way, the truth, and the life. And thank you, Lord, that in whatever we do, Heavenly Father, you are there as our counselor, by the power of your Holy Spirit, as our advocate, as our helper, as our comforter. We thank you, Lord God, that you do not change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. As I speak right now in this very moment, Lord, I'm not here on my own account, on my own accord, or my free will, but I'm subject to your will. So speak through me, Heavenly Father. This temple here, use it. Um, for I'm just a vessel. I'm by no means perfect, but we have all been perfected in you, Jesus. So have your way, Spirit of the living God. Speak through me and speak directly to the hearts of your children. May they be comforted. May they be reassured and established in you and held steadfast in you. For in you we move, in you we have our being. So thank you, Lord, that... Um, we know that you are a faithful God, you are compassionate, you are love. And although we've fallen short of your glory and we, you loved us even when we were still sinners, you still remain true to your nature, you remain true to your character, to who you are. So help us to become more into the likeness of your son, Christ Jesus, better versions of ourselves each and every day as you renew us, as you lead us in the way that we should go. So thank you that you are calling us again in this season right now to pick up 
our mentors to pick up that which you've commissioned us to do. But we cannot do this outside of the help of your Holy Spirit. And I pray all of this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ as I plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, over every single brother and sister who will be tuned in. And uh, thank you, Lord, for your consuming fire. And I pray all of this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, fam, this is what the God of glory is. Yeah, yeah, he's speaking about today. He's, he's, yeah, he landed this so heavy in my spirit since yesterday, actually. Isaiah 62, so I'm going to read the entire uh, chapter of Isaiah 62. So if you have your Bible, please follow. Um, for those who know me by now, I, I, I just have a lot, you know, there's like a whole lot of scriptures I'm going to be sharing as well. So, but, but, but the, the foundation scripture for, for today's teaching um, is, is actually Isaiah 62. And then I'm just going to flow from there. So basically what the God of glory is saying right now, he's calling many of his sons and daughters um, to actually move from a place of faith and not fear and not of doubt. Um, he's probably has landed in your spirit that you need to pick up an assignment or a project that you had left somewhere in the middle of nowhere and you just decided this never worked. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to be bothered by it. And um, you've probably just decided, God, I tried to work this, whether it's a business, whether it's a project or a new job or a career path. I don't know what it is. You take that back to the Lord. Um, but now he's probably has impressed it in your spirit to go back and pick up that assignment, pick up that business, pick up that project, pick up, you know, um, that course, that whatever it is that you tried before, but it actually didn't succeed, succeed. But this doesn't go for everything that you tried that did not succeed. So as you go back to your private place, as you go back to your closet, sought the Lord to reveal to you what exactly is it. Because I can't tell you what it is, right? I just prophesy in part or I speak in part. So I can't pinpoint exactly what it is. But there is that uh, God-given, God-ordained, God-anointed assignment that you were led to embark on way back when it could be a month from now, a month since now or years back, whatever it is, but as the, the, the spirit of revelation, Holy Spirit to lead you at, as to what exactly is it that the God of glory um, wants you to pick up because this time it's going to be very different. This time um, it's pretty much God giving many of his sons and daughters a second chance, but it's not, um, it, there's a purpose behind it because this time he's going to use that vehicle or use that assignment as a ministry to reach others through you. So be it a business, be it uh, a career path, he's going to put you in a certain place at a specific time for a specific purpose in accordance to his will. But you need to find out what that is that he wants you to pick up. But it's something that is that you had done in the past. It's something that you, you were passionate about in the past that you loved that you enjoyed, that you were so confident that it was going to work, but it didn't work. And you probably tried everything and thought to yourself, well, you know what? I tried, I give up, I'll never ever revisit this again. But the God of glory is calling many of his sons and daughters to go back and revisit the very thing that they failed at. Isn't God funny? The very thing that they feel that they failed, because to God it wasn't a failure. Everything happens in his own timing, and he knows exactly um, why certain things don't work out at certain times you know um that's what you, you know we always that's why we always speak about the kairos moment but this time based on the journey that you've gone through with the lord there's been a lot of internal workings that has happened inside of you that has gotten you ready to this point where he's probably impressed it in your spirit to go and pick up that you're feeling that unction you're feeling led that desire is coming back again that fire is coming back again for the very thing that you told yourself or you promised yourself that I'll never ever touch it again. So, if this is applicable to you, then let's talk, let's conversate, let's hear what the God of glory has to say. Remember everything that's coming out of my mouth, you need to go and verify with the Lord if it's applicable to you or not. If it's not, leave it alone. If it is, ask the Lord for further guidance and revelation in your part. So, that's my responsibility and, and yours to, to double check, triple check and, and, and test the spirits, right? Find out which spirit is speaking through Taban. The God of glory doesn't have a problem revealing those to his children. All right. So the heading of my Isaiah 62 says, A new name for Zion. Let us read from verse 1 through to 12, which is the entire chapter of 62. All right. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. 
till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You'll be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You'll be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hef, Zeba and your land Bola. For the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. As a, as a young man marries a maiden, so will your sons marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, um, so will your God rejoice over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest, and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sown by his right hand and by his mighty arm. Never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies, and never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. But those who harvest it will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your salvation comes, see his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought after, the city no longer deserted. So, I love this passage of scripture. <laughs> God is dishing out new names that is bestowing up upon his children in accordance to the purpose that he has for them in this now, like right now in this season. He's reestablishing his children and he's telling us not to give him rest, right? Until that you see that establishment has happened. You take it in the way that is applicable. And an establishment doesn't only speak to prosperity and money, it speaks about spiritual well being, prosperity in your spirits, pro prosperity in your soul. Um, it speaks about good health. It speaks about uh, his peace that surpasses all understanding, the joy of the Lord, you know. So many er you need to sort out what that looks like for you. But God of glory is busy reestablishing his, 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 his own, right? Those whose season is due for that, saying that they will no longer be called deserted. No longer will your name be shame, called shame. You'll no longer be labeled as, you know, um, worthless, as one who failed, this, that, and whatever name that they've given to you. Because when God comes in with a reestablishment and recommission, and uh, he restores you and he recompenses you with it, the assignment is attached to that. Okay, so that's why I started the way that I started earlier on by saying that he will, for many, the God of glory will lead them to pick up something from the past that he had laid in their heart and they knew that they had to do that. But at that point, it didn't work. And perhaps shame then was attached to it. Oh, you know, um, maybe you started a business and it didn't work. And all that was left was all that you had to go through was loss and trying to recover from it. The energy, the funds and whatever it is that you put on it didn't work. And perhaps, you know, you had a terrible partner who did, who did you in, whatever the situation may be, you know, it could be a marriage, it could be whatever it is, but God of glory is just saying, pick up that which he will impress in your spirit, because this time he is going to bring with him a reward for, for having been faithful in everything else that he has given you to do during that time when you had made peace with that loss, you've made peace with that failure, you had made peace with that, that thing that didn't work out. Because this time is coming back to establish uh, his own and to make sure that no longer will their land be called desolate, desolate no longer will their name uh, be called, be, 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 will their name be deserted, but there will be a land of prosperity and their land will be called Beulah because the God of glory is going to take delight in them. All right, so that is Isaiah 62. I want to then move on to a couple of other verses that the God of glory is speaking about. Just um, sit on these verses when you are, if you are led to and many others as the Spirit leads and meditate and allow for the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what he's actually saying, what your personal message is about them. Because he is the God of second chances. Although you could have failed at that project because you had your own 
sorry it was the timing wasn't right or you didn't move in the way that you're supposed to you didn't take leadership or guidance from the holy spirit you did your own thing that's still all right we serve a god of second chances i mean if you remember the story of samson we see how god gave him a second chance if you know very well the story of jonah we know that he was meant to go to aniniva and he figured he's gonna go elsewhere and the god of glory used his will to direct him exactly to where he wanted him to go so he was called once and then God called him again and said, I will commission you to the land that I've commissioned to commissioned you and you're going to do it because this is in my purpose. Right. And we also even ourselves, you know, us as Christians, those who are in Christ in spirit and in truth by Christ, by God, giving Christ Jesus as the ultimate atonement for my sin and yours. He was giving us a second chance because we had been separated from the Lord because of the sin that was committed in 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 the Garden of Eden. But. He gave Christ Jesus uh, to die and to, uh, you know, to die and to be the ultimate sacrifice so that we may be reconciled back unto the Lord and never again to be removed from his presence, provided that you receive Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior and you've got received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, you are forever in the presence of the Lord, although you are running the streets here on earth. But in the spirit, you are in his presence because Christ is seated on the right hand side of the father. And because we abide in Christ, we also abide in the father because him and the father are one. OK, so remember that um, we were also given a second chance. So now all you got to do is make sure that you hold fast to your gift of salvation and you be led by the spirit. OK. And then um, the other person who's very, uh, another character that the God of glory highlighted in my spirit was, was Peter. Many of us know about Peter, right? Uh, the one of Christ's disciples, one of his apostles who uh, denied him when Christ was, was being arrested because of fear. And we know how he wept bitterly after knowing that he had betrayed Christ Jesus. Um, after saying at the Last Supper that I would never deny you, Lord, when Christ Jesus told him exactly what was to come. Um, and he said, no, Lord, I'll never deny you. And I'll die with you. I'll go to prison with you, etc. And uh, come the 11th hour, he decides to just dash the God of glory and do his own thing. But we know later on when Christ was resu had resurrected and he started revealing himself unto his disciples, he also revealed himself to Peter. And by the power of the Holy Spirit that, over that, that became upon Peter, he was able to recognize Christ Jesus and perceive him as the Son of God. And from there, the Christ still recommissioned him back to his original assignment. Although he had been working with him, doing that which disciples were due to do while Christ was on the earth, he betrayed him. But because God is a God of forgiveness, he's a God of new beginnings. And that's where that portion comes in. He's a God of new beginnings, right? When he says that, go and pick up the old thing. I'm doing a new thing with the old thing. Peter was no fresher. <laughs> He was a veteran, you know what I'm saying, as the fisher of men when, when Christ was, was minister, ministering here during his ministry on the earth. So he was called back to his assignment, right? Although he didn't quite move in the way he was supposed to. We know that he was one of the loudest of the disciples. I mean, Peter, Peter was a character. I mean, he was Peter like that. So God is able to walk through anybody and he's no respect of persons and he doesn't show for veritism. He doesn't care who you are. He's able to use you and can walk through you. Um, and his purpose over you when you are yielded unto him shall remain. So then he, he showed up, you know, and he actually, after Peter told the Lord that you are, you know, the Christ and, you know, the anointed one, you are the son of God. And then he said upon this rock, you know, which Peter actually means rock in Hebrew. The word, the name Peter means rock. Upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail over it. That's found in the book of Matthew. So he reestablished him back to his to his assignment, which is being the fish of men now, being you know the the disciple of Christ Jesus, one that's going to be preaching the gospel, and spreading the good news. So, it's essentially what the God of Glory is also doing in this season. Um, my assignment and yours will be very different. He commissioned me to sit here and minister the word. For you, it could be in the business world. It could be you being a stay-at-home mom. It could be do you doing something for an NPO or having a certain role to play in church. Uh, it could be picking up a different career path or going back to the one that you had rejected. Whatever it is that new beginning is about, know that um, the God of Glory is commissioning his vast army of remnants into different areas for such a time as this. So do not fear but know that he is going ahead of you. But discern first exactly what is it that he wants you to pick up from your past that you did before that didn't work.
because he's going to bring it all the way around because that Peter that became the rock upon which Christ built the church is not the same Peter that was working the land with Christ um, prior to his crucifixion. You know, we know that he was very um, regretful and he remorsed and he wept bitterly, but he was away at that point. He had come to know Christ even on a deeper level. You know, and some of us had to go through that. When that assignment came at the time, it was probably almost like, think of it as a prelude to that which God would want you to do. But there's a little, there's a journey between that assignment. There's a journey that you got to walk, actually, from the time when he dropped it in your spirit way back when, to the time when you got to really pick it up and now be about carrying forth that assignment or carrying forth in action, in execution, that mission that he had already laid in your heart. So a couple of verses when you have a moment read up on them but this are just to encourage you that he's a god that rebuilds he's a god that restores he's a god of double everything double everything he's a god of recompense so though you might have lost what you lost in the process of that which you wanted to do back then he will restore you he will he will redeem the time thank you jesus yeah holy spirit i never saw that one coming he will redeem the time thank you lord and um he will bring everything um uh, full circle, you know, so that you are able to be about the business, you know. Um, so all is not lost because he's a God of timing. He, he knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. So we're going to start reading from, um, when you have time, please jot this down when you have a moment. Okay, when you have a moment, jot this down and, and meditate and take it to the Lord and ask him to minister some more to you. Proverbs twenty four sixteen says, for though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again, but the wicked are brought down by calamity. So you might have just, you know, knocked your head a couple of times trying to do that, which um, you felt you needed to do, but it didn't work. It's okay. We all, we all go through that. But you rise again, not in your own strength, not in your own strength, not in your own power, not in your own might, by, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And that, that is a central point of this message is that, that which is asking you to pick up again, once you've confirmed that, that he, which we have, you've identified it, the Holy Spirit has confirmed it, you're going to be doing what you need to be doing by the Spirit of the Lord, through the capacity of the Spirit of the Lord, not by your own might or power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, because he is building for himself his ministry within that assignment that he is bringing back to you again to run with. Yes, I think I put it right. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Sometimes it's a bit tricky explaining stuff, you know. But anyway, thank you, Holy Spirit. And then uh, Hosea 6, 1 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us, torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. So he's a God who heals. And he doesn't talk about physical healing only. It speaks about emotional, spiritual, financial, you know, um, emotional, uh, psychological etc physically even you know so that's what that word healing actually translates as as a lot in the bible another verse that i love that the god of glory led me to as well just to he's affirming himself on this one uh is uh psalm 72 verse no Psalm 71, verse 20 to 24, it says, Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again from the depths of the earth. You will again bring me up. So you might have gone through the ringer during that time and you've seen a lot of troubles and challenges and hardships and the list goes on. He's a God of glory who is saying that he is going to restore your life again. He will again rise you up. He will again bring you up from the depths of the earth. All right. And then if you turn with me to Psalm 51, which I love so much as well, that entire chapter of Psalm 51 is my all-time favorite. It says, um, Psalm 51 verse 12 says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So the God of glory is about to rejoice for me. Um, he's about to restore for many the joy of their salvation in this season. He also took me to Zechariah 9. Zechariah 9. 
912. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Zechariah 912. Me and my pronunciation. Oh, my people. Okay, what does it say? It says... Pretty, very powerful passage of scripture. Zechariah 9, 12 says... Return to your fort fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Pretty much what he told Job, right? That he does double for his trouble. Double recompense, double restoration, and the list goes on. But, but when you return to the fortress of the Lord, your God, it's you allowing for his spirit to lead you as you pick up that assignment. Because you've got to be led by the spirit on how to do what he wants you to do. Because it is... His assignment and his plans about that assignment, and you are just going to be an instrument that he's going to use to establish that assignment, to sustain that assignment, to uh, grow that assignment, you know, um, and use it as a vehicle for, for his ministry in how he wants to minister through that to others. So remain in the presence of the Lord. If you have walked wayward because you were disheartened, you grew weary, you grew tired and discouraged because of that failed assignment, that failed project, it's okay. Um, just like Peter, I mean, Peter went short left with the Lord, but he's a God who calls his own back to himself. He doesn't wish for anybody to perish, and he definitely wants us to live out our will in Christ Jesus. Fully live out the will that he has for our lives in Christ Jesus. So you can return to the Lord with mourning and fasting and weeping, okay? You sought revelation on what that looks like for you. You can step back into the Lord and return into his presence and, and, and sought after his kingdom and his righteousness. It's a do-over season. So not all is lost and you shouldn't sit there condemning yourself that, you know, you backslid because of this and something else and you decided to kind of like ease up on your work with the Lord. Maybe you're not even as hot for Christ as you used to be. You know, um, he's a God of forgiveness. He's a God of new beginnings. He is a God who is able to do all things and can do new things. He is doing a new thing right now. Do you not perceive it? See that it's springing forth. He is doing it right now in real time. So even if you were a prisoner of hope, you are the one saying that I, I will rest my hope unto the Lord. The Bible does say that those who rest their hope in the, unto the Lord will not be dismayed or disappointed. They will not be disgraced. And um, walk away with shame. So you have been kept prisoned, <laughs> prisoner by the hope that you have in Christ Jesus, right? Who is the hope of glory. So you are in a very good position. But the God of glory is calling us to walk with him on this journey for such a time as this. As he is having many of his children pick up that which he had assigned for them to do way back when. But he will highlight exactly what it is that he wants you to do. And then he will lead you. Allow for the Holy Spirit to lead you. So that um, that which the God of glory wants to do is established and he's actually successful because it's, it's, it's about his, yeah, it's for his name's sake, by the way. God doesn't do stuff. <laughs> he told the Israelites one day when they were getting funky, you know, and he said that, don't flatter yourself, you know, not everything. God, I'm paraphrasing, guys. Okay, there's no, there's, he doesn't, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but he was basically saying that they mustn't flatter themselves, you know, thinking that God is doing what God was doing at that time for them per se. He was doing it for his name's sake. Um, so that he doesn't, he doesn't have his name dishonored. That's another word for, an, for another day, so we're not going to jump on that. Psalm 103, um, from 1 to 5 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The heading on Psalm 103 says the Lord is compassionate. Yes, indeed. He's a God of compassion. That's who he is. And then um, he also took me to Amos 9, 14, uh, which is a scripture we studied the year with. He's still on that, um, where he's, he's restoring his, his people in real time. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And um, this is what the Lord is saying about or what he's saying in Amos 9. Um, Amos 9, 14. 
I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. Establishment. He's repeating himself. Whatever it is that you're going to pick up, he will then establish it and he will plant you. And where he's going to plant you, there's nobody who's going to be able to uproot you, unlike before. That didn't hold any weight or any water, whatever it is that you tried to establish at that time. Although it was an assignment from the Lord, it would not be established because it wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time. It was out of sync with his program. And now that there's a lot of things that you have done inside of your life and you're moving in the direction of the Lord, we go and get a do-over. And this time you've got the Spirit of the Lord whom you've, he's trained you on how to recognize his voice, how to follow his leadership, how to be obedient as he guides you, right? And to remain humble under the mighty hand of God. So you're going to move different this time around on that very same assignment. It's not going to be the same. And where he's going to plant you, nobody is going to uproot you. Thank you, Jesus, for that. All about that life. <laughs> Being established in the Lord. Jeremiah... I did say we're going to be paging through a lot of verses. So we're going to go to Jeremiah 30, verse. Jeremiah 30, verse 19, 17. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion for whom no one cares. Yep. That's what the God of glory is doing. Whatever those wounds look like, by the way, they do not always be physical. Whatever those wounds are. First Peter 5.10 says, You take everything back to the Lord and you get more clarification from what he has to say to you. The one on one like that. First Peter five ten says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. It's all about establishment, being firm, being sustained, being man being maintained by the Spirit of the Lord, but you have a role to play in that. Yes, you've been through suffering based on that assignment not working out the way that you had anticipated regardless of how good um, your plans were how your projections were whatever it is and the lord keeps directing me to speak like it's a business uh he called you into business or he called you yeah into business he's, he's, he's leaning more towards the business side of things so if you are a business person um or the you were not one but the god of glory had perhaps led you to want to establish a business and you did so and it didn't work or maybe you were a business wanting to expand and you didn't go you went into a separate in a certain direction or launched something but out within the framework of or from the like a sub sub um what do you call that <laughs> subdivision of your parent company and that idea didn't work it's all good he you suffered a little while for that but the god of glory he, he himself will establish you um, and this time, nobody's going to be able to uproot you. Which other verses do you want me to read, Lord? No, what's the collisions? No, 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 no. Philippians, eh? Yeah, that's Philippians. Let's stick with Philippians. All right, and then Philippians 1 6 says. Being confident of this, that he who began a good thing in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. When Peter decided to deny Christ, he didn't put an end to his God-ordained assignment or call that the God of glory had for him. That didn't end it there. Because Christ had to see it to completion that that which they had assigned for Peter in accordance to the will of the Father came to, it actually took place until the day of completion. So he died years later after he'd been established as a rock and he continued to, to do what he had to do. In fact, he was crucified upside down. I think it's about seven years 
after Christ's resurrection that he passed on. But you know, they were going, people were going crazy, you know, coming after the disciples. But he had a mission. He had a seven-year period after that point of denying Christ and Christ reestablishing him to complete the mission that Christ had assigned for him to do. So no, the God of glory is, has not given up, to, given up on you if you wait wayward for whatever purpose it is or took some wrong decisions or things didn't work out because you did everything in your own strength according to your own understanding, um, intellect, etc. He's saying that this time you're doing it with him. This time you're doing it with him. And that's, that's how we're going to be moving with the Lord. Be led of his spirit in that business. Be led of his spirit in that assignment. Don't get ahead of the Lord. Don't get ahead of the Lord and remain in his presence because it is in his presence where he'll be giving you supernatural ideas, um, where he'll be giving you revelation, uh, foresight, and uh, wisdom in the depths or places that you wouldn't otherwise to naturally be able to get to. So you, you have to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit be the one that is your CEO, your MD, your business partner, your right hand, your everything. Do not take any step outside of taking it first to the Lord. Ask the Lord. As something as simple as designing a logo. Ask him, which company should you be using? Who should be the person to design that for you? And be led of the Spirit. Every single thing, every single, every single thing is going to reflect back to the God whom you serve. So he is the God who operates with the Spirit of excellence but he will have the right people, but you need to allow for him to lead you to those right suppliers, the right um, partners, the right uh, business partners or associates or clients or, or people who are going to be giving you other services to establish, to re-establish, not establish afresh, but to re-establish this because when he leads you to those people, you put them at the right places at the right time to design, you, you download into their spirits how they should do that design. I'm just making an example, for example, how they should design your website because whatever it is that is going to be using that business of yours for, it is going to reflect back to the ministry of Christ Jesus. And he's setting it up that way because understand this, things are shifting, okay? Things are shifting. So even in the, in the, in the marketplace, there's a lot of shifting that's happening. There are businesses that, has, that had to go under. They were not established on the rock of ages. They were not established on Christ. So now God is establishing businesses and new business people who are going to be for the Lord, about the Lord. So the way they do business is going to be different. They're going to be applying um, godly principles on how they deal with their employees. They're going to be applying godly principles on how they deal with their clients because Christ Jesus is establishing for himself a new um, he's establishing for himself a new vast army sorry guys a new vast army of remnants who he will structurally or strategically put in different places and that goes for business as well I hope my sound is still okay and that goes for business as well so be led of the spirit and allow for the God of glory to, to lead you in how to put everything together because he himself will restore you and he himself will establish you to be led on how that looks like and allow for him to bring in the right people to carry forth whatever it is that he wants to do through you. Okay, because, yeah, he could be establishing your business because there are people that he, they're going to be employed by you. Right? And, and, and this also speaks to a lot of people whom he's going to put in a leadership position. We are picking up that, that assignment this ship okay um similar to peter peter was always a leader right and there's a reason why god chose him right because he knew that he'd be able to lead his sheep his flock and feed them in the way that they should your sheep could be your employees and then you need to govern your business the way that is the, the god living right um that's why god has to be the center of it and this also forms part of wealth transfer that the God of Glory speaks about. Wealth transfer, transfer doesn't necessarily mean you sit there, you fold your arms and boom, magically there's an account, there's money coming in your bank account. No, 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 no. Wealth transfer will require for you to do the work. But in doing the work,
work God is going to fast track how far the growth of your business fast track its advancement because there is a ministerial mission attached to it I hope I'm making sense Lord sometimes I feel like Lord am I making sense you know so don't be surprised when you establish your business today and three months from now your digits hit different and supernatural doors get opened and uh, you find your product for example or your service is being required from clients you can only dream of locally and internationally that's how big this assignment is because it has a ministry attached to it because god is trusting many to say that this has been established and this is my source of establishment so establishment thank you jesus thank you Lord, for reminding me of that you will be bold enough as a leader to stand your ground and say that i established this business on the rock of ages who is christ jesus I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed that I'm Christian. I'm not ashamed that I worship Christ Jesus. And and people won't have to double do a double take because they will know based on what your employees say about how you conduct business with your vendors, with your with your suppliers, with your employees, with your business partners, and how you relate to other people. Because we will allow for the spirit of the Lord to work through you so that He's able to reach His people in your business. area that the bottle crew is not going to touch in terms of um, in terms of his great commission. Many fragments of society, everything is being shook, everything is being shaken. That which doesn't have that which needs to be shaken is being shaken as we speak. There are businesses that are collapsing as I'm talking to you right now. Doors have been shut for a long time and some businesses have been around for decades but right now it makes sure sunk and that's going to continue to happen but as those are sinking God is raising up godly establishments which are about doing right by the people because he's a God of justice it's also a way of him recompensing people for his own and it's also a way of him balancing the scales he's a God of justice leveraging you know for a long time long time Satan has been running amok but in as much as he's doing what he's doing, the God of God is also about his mission. So we need to be obedient and be discerning. God, what is it that you want me to pick up and how do you want me to move? We could very well still be in ministry, full-time ministry. Could call you back to go to your choir, only to find that you probably will have to go back to singing again. You probably left the choir because of whatever reasons, for example. But he's calling you back then because he probably wants to make out of you an international global gospel icon. One who is not going to be selling him. One who will stand your ground and be like, yeah, I worship the Lord. And he's going to use your platform or use your talent to reach others and to minister to others to your music. This fresh sound that you probably want to download on your spirit. Whatever that new assignment, new project is. It's not even new. Sorry. It's not new. Whatever that is, it's going to going to be re-established afresh in Jesus, re-established in you in Jesus, but it's not new, when I say a new assignment, new calling, I'm referring to it being renewed or made a new by Christ, because now this time is going to be in it, and it's going to be running with you, and it's going to be a new beginning, a new beginning in the sense that it's a do-over with Christ in it, it's a do-over with the God of glory being the foundation upon which this do-over is taking place.
somebody that he would have appointed and he would direct their heart and give them ideas on how to do what he needs you, what you need assist, assist, uh, assistance with in relation to that particular field. That's how he's going to bring in the help. If you say, Lord, I need somebody who's a graphic designer, and you pray about it, he will bring that person to your need you to approach a particular support or a particular company. And they'll be ready to receive you because of that being God's divine intervention and God being a part of it. He knows exactly who you're supposed to be doing what in your company. And he will anoint them to do the work in accordance to his will because we're building this together. We are rebuilding the ruins together. We are reestablishing um, this ministry, if I should call it that way, which, he, which essentially it is where you leave the business with the Lord by your side. So this message is, yeah, it's mostly for those who are called back to entrepreneurship, to go back into different industries and to be um, MPs and CEOs of their own companies. Know that before you are a CEO, before you are a director, before you are an MD, what a glory has to be ahead of you. And that way you will not be led astray because you will allow for the spirit of the Lord who sees all things, knows all things, and will lead you in all truths. You will give him the his space to lead you and to guide you in the way that you should go. So there's a second chance that's a window of, of, of second chances that's been uh, given for, for those who the world glory has called into the business world and the marketplace. And there is anointing, there is anointing in the marketplace. There are those who are anointed because he needs those who need to be in the marketplace so that they can find the gospel. Okay, you can find the gospel because the currency of the earth is money, but the currency of heaven is faith. But faith is also in the currency that we need to have. So know that whatever is establishing with you, especially in business, he keeps going back to business. In the business world, it's not for you, it's so that you can partake in the advancement of the gospel of Christ Jesus to reach the nations. And there he will lead you also where you want to sow, what establishment you must um, or institution you must support and it not be within the, the framework of church it could be you taking a child to school uh, taking a child through university, helping somebody else establish their own brand, it could be you helping somebody out with rent for three months it could be you helping somebody out with a car, um, it could be you helping somebody out with rental or them renting from you for free whatever it is the Lord will lead you because really um, offering and giving is very different. It's not always about the easiest, about the 10% tithing to the church, but the way God is going to be moving, understand this. Thank you, Lord. He ministered something to me also very interesting recently. And this might not sit well with a lot of people, but I'm not here to appease and please other people. Today, when the God of glory told, I can't remember who he said this to, but he told them that he's not a God that actually resides in temples that are made by the hands of men. Your body is the temple of God. So when you are led to sow your 10% onto the life of someone, and God says, don't give it to your church, which is the structural church this month. I'm leading you to give it to this person. Do it. Because you are the church. Your body is the temple of God. The body hosts the Holy Spirit. It could be a, 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 there could be a purpose behind why God wants you to give X amount of money to a particular person or support them in a certain way or another. That does not get discounted as not tithing because you will be giving what you'll be giving in the name of the Lord to the church who is the person, the temple of the Lord so that there may be food in God's storehouse because that person will probably have a purpose but God will lead you, be led, be led I keep saying this, be led don't let yourself be taken advantage of be led of the spirit because God is very specific he will tell you I want you to do this for that person, I want you to do that for that Double check, triple check with the Holy Spirit that you are hearing directly from Him. Because Satan is opportunistic like that. He might give you ideas or he will try and stop you or confuse you. God is not an author of confusion. When He's assigned you to do a certain thing, He's assigned you to do a certain thing. And that is the thing that He wants you to do. So it's up to us to sort the Lord, to sort the face of the Lord on how He wants us to do. So tithing is going to be 
a little different as we move forward. Yes, we're going to be supporting establishments and churches because they are also caring for the art vehicles that God is doing, but it's not limited to that only. A person who is in Christ Jesus worships him in spirit and in truth. He's the bride of Christ. And if they are, whatever it is that God has assigned for them to do, speaks to what they are being commissioned to do in the Lord Christ Jesus, and you are asked to support them in one way or another, be led of the Lord and obey the Lord. Instructions or instruction of the Lord. He dwells inside of us, and you, as the church, He directs you to walk the field. As a royal priest, would you go work to do? Perhaps that person would need that X amount of money for that month so that they can go forth and help somebody else, or go and speak a word to a, to a church, or go overseas for whatever. I don't know, whatever it is, you know, but don't be only limited to think the entire thing has to be in a church that is by that name and we be to a church that we're going to be flexible because we're going to be led by the Spirit. God doesn't follow rules, you know, as, uh, He doesn't operate like we think He does as humans. He does what God wants to do. So He's moving a little different also in that, in that area. And just, yeah, He highlighted, He brought it back to my remembrance because I had a revelation about this for myself. cheerful giver while you are at it, whether it's to a person as well led by the Spirit, a home, could be very well your neighbor as you are led by the Spirit, an organization, a school, NPO, church itself, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, because in that also, like I want to go back, there are those that will be picking up their own assignments, which God is going to use you to, to sow into so that it may be established where I'm going, my people. Thank you, Jesus. Now it's starting to make sense. <laughs> Guys, I love for the Lord to speak. Let's go. He brings it together as I'm preaching. Okay, so the plan is this. As he's establishing Israel, using his remnants, there will be that exchange taking place. Right? So, for example, when you offer your service for free in support of a sister or a brother who wants to come up with a marketing strategy, you are sowing in to that assignment and you won't know if the Lord has led them to pick up that assignment afresh but he's, he's moving you or he has uh, he got, he, he, they prayed about it and God is leading you to want to do that don't resist the action of the Holy Spirit because sowing doesn't only speak to money it also speaks to services you know you can pick, give of your time there's an offering right you can give of your time give of your services give of your expertise because God will probably use you because he knows he can speak to you and he can download into your spirit how you need to be of service to them so that they can move on to the next level and take his mission forward to where he wants to direct it. Do you hear me, my people? And this was very evident also from the visit that I had last time where I, the God of glory, I did say that he's bringing um, his people, his remnants from everywhere in the world and we're going to be meeting it the most unexpected places, having unexpected conversations and coming up with unexpected collaborations and partnerships right there and then. So that is still going to continue in this season. And it's part of restoration, part of restoration for individuals, for organizations, for institutions alike. There's a whole shift that's taking place, but we need to be discerning and we need to remain in the closet so that we know what God is doing at what time. We might not see the whole picture because it's gone like that, but at least we'll have an idea of how we need to move forward, our role will give us our role to play each and every step of the way. So in this season right now, he's not only bringing his own together because they need to be, you know, there's a purpose behind that because they're being put strategically as collectives to go ahead and be about the Great Commission. It's not called Great for nothing. There's, there's a reason why God is calling it the Great Commission. It's going to be done quickly. It's going to be done effectively, and it's going to be done on a great scale, preparing the way for the Lord. He's returning any time from now, like quite literally any time from now. So let us then occupy the land as and be led by the Spirit on what that looks like, because God is keeps things fresh, you know. <laughs> he keeps it fresh along here. So what He did yesterday doesn't mean He's going to be doing it today. He doesn't change, but He's 
about what he wants to do. He always keeps it fresh. That's why he's a God of revelation. You can never... The God is layered. I don't know how to explain this. Spirit of revelation, these revelations are layered like that. You know, even the verses in the Bible are layered like that. But you need a discerning spirit to, to get to what he's revealing or to get to the meaning of the revelation or the content, you know, the meat of it of what he's, what he's revealing unto you so that you can put it into practice. Because what's the point of revelation if you can't put it into practice? What's, what's the point of fresh knowledge, fresh perspective if you can't take action on it? Faith without words is dead, right? So as he's revealed what he's doing now, we need to then back it up with action by faith in Christ. And that's how we're going to move. Yeah, so thank you, Jesus, for that. That was um, that was quite something. Thank you, Lord. Some of the stuff you are saying now, I never saw coming because they are not on my notes. And that's how the Holy Spirit moves. So when I say He flows, I mean like He flows. So thank you, Lord, for the word. Is that all, Jesus? Um, is that all, Lord? together.